Hello, my name's Janet Few. I've just come from doing a talk about 20th century records for family history. We tend to neglect the 20th century. We rush back in a scattergun approach, collecting all those ancestors from the 19th century and the 18th century. And we think, well, the 20th century, I know it all. I remember my granny, she was born in the 19th century. Why do I need to look at the 20th century? Well, there are a number of reasons. Of course, it's part of your family history. But increasingly now, we're doing those DNA tests, aren't we? And back come all those third cousins and fourth cousins. And how do we know how they relate to us? Well, in order to find out a little bit more about them, we're going to have to trace our family back and then come back down forwards to our current generations. And that's another reason why 20th century research is becoming more and more important. But it's a vital part of our family history. We shouldn't be neglecting it. I've been finding it fascinating. It's a fascinating period to research. So much goes on. The First World War, the Second World War, the fight for women's suffrage, the development of, of social conscience and social service. So there's a lot of innovation, social history to get your teeth into, as well as just aunties, uncles, grannies and granddads. So I've been writing this book. It's a novel, Barefoot on the Cobbles, and it was based on a family history story. So I've been really immersing myself in the 20th century just recently and I've been asked to give you some tips about what you can do. Well first of all is don't neglect your 20th century ancestors. Please treat them with the same respect and with the, as much meticulous detail as you do those far distant ancestors. I would also suggest that you include yourself in this. You're part of your own family history so write down some notes about your own memories and your own life. Think how wonderful it would be if Granny had done something like that and you could look at it now. So make sure you stack that up for your descendants. And also from personal, uh, personal experience, bitter personal experience, it's been said before, but do we do it? All those photographs, you've got no excuse now for not digitising them, copying them and labelling them and then passing them on to other members of the family. I recently spent a horrible three months where I lost the family photo album. And uh, I'd done some scanning, but I certainly hadn't scanned them all. And I was very much in luck because it did turn up. And the first thing I did was to make sure I filled in all those gaps. So what can I say as an amusing anecdote? Well, this is a little bit more difficult. Um, I, I suppose it's not amusing, but really the story behind the novel, uh, which is not my own personal family, it's uh, someone else I know's family. And it related to uh, his great-grandparents. And it turned out that they'd been accused of the manslaughter of one of their daughters. And absolutely nobody in the family knew anything about it. Given that this took place in a little rural village where everybody knows everything, when somebody breathes, they tell a whole world about it. Not a word about this court case. So out there are your family secrets and I think I would encourage you to seek them out and purely by focusing down on a small part of your family history on a very short time span you suddenly find that all those results come flooding back to you. So good luck with your 20th century research, don't neglect those modern ancestors and maybe you can come and tell me about what you found out. Thank you very much.